close your eyes and watch your breath. Make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath coming in, going out, because you want your mind to be under your control. And this is a good way to practice, because otherwise it goes thinking about things that can make you miserable if you're not careful. So you have to keep watch over it all the time. You can't just let it wander around. It's like having an animal in your home. You've got to train it so that it doesn't create messes, doesn't go running out and get itself in trouble. Because we live in a world that has lots of good things and bad things. We're going to have to face up with good things and bad things in life. And you want a mind that can not suffer even when bad things come, and that knows how to make proper use of good things. Because sometimes good things come and you use them in the wrong way and they can cause you trouble. You get money and you think money is a good thing, but then you go out and you buy something that can kill somebody else or can kill you. So you have to be careful about the good things in life. And as for the bad things, you have to learn that okay, even though there are bad things in life, you don't have to oppress your own mind with them. This is an important skill. This is why this has been passed on for generations and generations and generations. Parents who love their children, grandchildren who love their grandchildren want everyone in the family to have this skill. So it's good to train yourself in this so that you can carry on the tradition, because this is how we live in the world without suffering. We get good things so we can get, get good use out of them, because the mind is trained. When bad things come, we can even figure out bad, <coughs> good things to do with them. As I say, when life gives you lemons, you can make lemonade. When you get garbage, you can turn it into compost. That's a sign of a good person, a person who is wise, who knows how to find happiness even in difficult situations. And when things are easy, good, that's that much easier. So you want to train your mind so that it's reliable, you can depend on it. When we take refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha, we take refuge in people who are reliable and a teaching that's reliable. But still, that's on the outside level. And to make it inside, you have to develop these qualities in your heart. The quality of the Buddha is his, his compassion, his wisdom, his purity, his mindfulness, his alertness. These are all qualities of the Buddha that, when we take them inside, would become our refuge, too. In other words, they make us safe. We don't have to be exposed to the dangers of the world because we've got good qualities protecting us inside. So make sure that we carry on this, this tradition that's been carried on for more than 2,500 years now. The realization that if you want to be happy in life, it has to start with your mind. You've probably seen people who have all kinds of wealth and all kinds of other pleasures and powers, but they're not really happy. And you've seen other people who are very poor but are happy. Now, that doesn't mean that poverty makes you happy and wealth makes you miserable. But what it does mean is that those things are not what can make the difference between happiness and misery. What makes the difference is whether or not your mind is trained. So take this opportunity to train your mind. Tell it to stay right here with the breath. Let the breath be comfortable so it's a nice place to stay. Use a little wisdom in focusing the mind on the breath. And you find that you have the beginning of an important skill. 